Hello and welcome to Cisco Router Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. Today we're building a base configuration on a Cisco router using the setup script. This is based on Interactive Exercise 1.3. In Chapter 1 in my book, The Accidental Administrator Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. It's available from Amazon.com and through other channels, although it's not required for the video, but if you'd like to follow along, you can pick up a copy. The video is based on Cisco iOS version 15.14 M1, although this procedure using the setup script has been unchanged in many, many years. So even if you're using an older router like a 1600 or a 1700 or even a 2500 series router, uh, you should be able to follow along. Might have to make some minor modifications, but nothing that you won't be able to figure out. Here's the network diagram for the exercise, and this is way more than you need, but I went ahead and built it with the Ethernet cables uh, in case you wanted to connect to the Internet and uh, test your configurations. Uh, but really all you need is a management workstation. The one I'm using runs Windows 7, connected via a console cable to a Cisco 1941 router or any Cisco router. The one I'm using is a 1941, but uh, as long as you're using an iOS-based router, uh, this is the diagram that you should use. Here are the prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need the following. Unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco router. As long as you have that, then you can do what we're about to do. And your equipment software requirements. You'll need a Cisco iOS-based router. Now, I used a Cisco model 1941. You may be thinking, well, gosh, Linksys, that's Cisco. Can I use that? And the answer is no. It has to be an iOS-based router. So uh, I'm using, like I said, a 1941. You could use an 1841. You could use 3600, 7200 series, uh, 2500 series, as long as it's iOS-based. You'll need one computer acting as your management workstation and a console cable. You've got a couple of choices that I'll go over in just a moment. And terminal emulation software such as PuTTY, or you could use Secure CRT, uh, Hyper Terminal, um, TerraTerm, uh, Minicom, doesn't matter. Just some uh, terminal emulation software. The one I'm using is PuTTY. Now, as I mentioned, you have a couple of options for console cables. If you're using a newer router, like the one I'm using is a 1900 series, then you can use the USB console cable, which is a USB type A to 5-pin mini type B cable, like what you see pictured on screen. If you're going to use that, then you'll also need to download and install the drivers, and it's in a file called cisco underscore USB console dot zip. Search for that file name at cisco.com, and you can download it. Requires a Cisco username and password, but at least as of this recording, doesn't require a support contract. If you're using Mac OS X or Linux, no special drivers required. You can just plug in and rock and roll. Once you get everything set up, the driver's installed. If you need to do that, then you'll need to connect to the USB console port, which you can see pictured here. It is a mini USB port, like I mentioned, and uh, you can plug in there. Now, notice that you also have the traditional RJ45 console port available on the back of the router. You can use one or the other, but not both. Now, if you have an older router, like even a, an 1800 or 2800 series, or a really old one, like a 2500, then you're going to need to use the traditional Cisco console cable, which, as you can see on the left, on one end has an RJ45 connector. On the other hand, uh, on the other end is a DB9 connector. If your management workstation doesn't have a serial DB9 connector on the back, and let's be real, most of them today, many of them anyway, don't, especially if you have a laptop, then you're going to need to get a USB to DB9 adapter like what I'm showing you on the right. Um, and I'll tell you, from my own experience, I've not had good luck with them. They do the job, but I've, I've worked with two different brands from two different vendors, and both have caused my PC to blue screen. I've talked to other people who haven't had that problem, uh, but uh, I just I hope you have better luck with it than I do. If you're using the traditional console cable, then you'll need to plug into the console port. And uh, if you've worked with routers a lot, this is going to seem really obvious to you. But if you're new to them, uh, I just want to mention, I've seen this happen often in classrooms where I'm teaching a Cisco router class to people who are brand new to them. And because it has an RJ45 connector, they'll just automatically plug it into an Ethernet port. Don't do that. Plug it into the console port, the one that's marked in the, the blue uh, label that says console. Don't use the aux port either. You really, just for our purposes, you need to use the console port. So just be, be aware of that and be careful about that. 
Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. No guarantees whatsoever. Please do not attempt these procedures on a production router without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Procedures shown in this video will destroy your router's existing configuration, so ensure you have fully backed up your router's configuration and software images before commencing these procedures. And performing these procedures may open your router to the public internet and subject your network to attack, even if you do it correctly. So make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. That's really just generally good advice, isn't it? Here's a summary of the steps. Number one, you'll erase the existing configuration. So there's nothing in NVRAM and non-volatile RAM. You'll reboot the router, and when you reboot it, it should automatically run the setup script. If it doesn't, you can use the privilege mode command setup to uh, start the setup script. I've seen that happen with some older routers occasionally where they wouldn't automatically start the setup script, but the newer ones seem to be pretty good about doing that. So let's go ahead and start the, the demo. We'll log into the router and we'll go into privilege mode with the command enable. I'll abbreviate it with just EN and type in my password. Now I'm in privilege mode. You can see that because I've got a pound sign for my prompt and I'm going to use the command show startup config to look at the contents of my NVRAM. I could abbreviate that with just show start. And there it is. I'm, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but we'll just go ahead and touch Q to break out of it. Now let's erase it. So we'll use the command erase startup config. I could also use the command write erase if you like the older commands. Confirm it. And now it's gone. And let's verify that with the command show startup config. And as you can see, it says startup config is not present. So now let's go ahead and reload the router. So we'll type reload. Proceed with reload. Yes. Sometimes it'll ask, it'll say the configuration has been modified and ask if you want to save it. If yours does that, don't save it because that would mean that it would load up the NVRAM again. You don't want to do that. So we'll go ahead and let it reload. And now, through the miracle of modern time-lapse videography and some slick editing by our producer, we're back with a reloaded router. And you'll notice that it says, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? We're going to say yes in just a moment. But I also want to point out the error the, that you see saying error opening TFTP. What's happening right now is that the router is looking for a TFTP server. Since it doesn't have a configuration, it's saying, gosh, maybe I can find one on a TFTP server and download it uh, so that I can have a configuration. In the book, I actually have you disconnect the network cable so you don't get that error, but I left it in place here so I could talk about that. So we'll go ahead and type yes. And by the way, when you get these errors, you can just go ahead and type the commands uh, as though the error wasn't even there. Now, a couple of things. It says, at any point, you may enter a question mark for help. It lies. You can do that once you get the configuration done, but not during the configuration process with the setup script. Use Control-C to abort the configuration dialog at any prompt. If you decide you want to start over again, then you can do that. Use Control-C and then type setup to start the setup script again. Your default settings are in square brackets. Well, not exactly. Notice what it says. Would you like to enter basic management setup? And then in square brackets, it says yes, no. <laughs> so what is the default? Well, what it really ought to say is if there is a default, it's in square brackets. Otherwise, it gives you your choices. So we're going to uh, go with one of the choices. Now, notice that it says, would you like to enter basic management setup? And intuitively, what do you want to say? You want to say yes, right? Well, that's the wrong answer. What you want to say is no, because we want to go into extended setup, because that will allow us to configure each of the interfaces on the system. So I'm going to type no for going into extended management setup. Now it wants to show us the current interface summary. I'm sure, why not? We'll take a look at it. There you can see everything's unset except for gig 0 slash 1, which has an IP address on it. That's because it's connected to my uh, test network here. And, and so it picked one up from the DHCP server. We're going to blow that away and uh, put one in manually in a moment. So now we'll go to configuring the global parameters. It's asking for a host name. It suggests the creative host name of router. We're going to put in one that's not much more creative. We'll just say test router. And again, we can just ignore those errors and just type around them. Now it wants the enable secret. This is the encrypted privilege mode password. So this is one that ought to be fairly robust. Uh, for our purposes here, we'll use P at SS5678. Now it wants the enable password. This is 
a password that you'll never use, but the setup script requires it. It's unencrypted in the configuration, and it is usurped by the enable secret, so you'll never use it, but you do have to configure it, so we'll just use password. Now it wants the virtual terminal password. That is a Telnet password, or SSH, so we'll use p at ss1234. Configure SNMP network management. You may want to do that in the real world for our purposes here. We're going to say no. Now it wants to know if we want to configure IP. We'll say yes. Just hit enter because that's the default. Configure RIP routing. Again, we'll say no. Configure CLNS. That's connectionless network setup or network services, and we're going to say no to that as well. Bridging also no. So just hit enter. Now it wants to know if we want to configure the embedded service engine uh, interface, and we're going to say no to that. That's like a really a separate partition on the router. Do you want to configure gig zero slash zero interface? We're going to say yes to that and configure IP. Yes. IP address. Well, if you'll recall the diagram at the beginning of the video, we're going to put in 192.168.101.1. That is a class C address and the router is smart enough to recognize that and suggest a 24-bit mask, which would be the default used with a class C address. And we'll go ahead and accept that of 255.255.255.0. Now it asks if we want to configure gig 0 slash 1. And we're going to say no to that. You might want to do that in the real world, but I want to show you how to configure uh, an interface manually to pick up an, a, an IP address from a DHCP server. So we're going to say no. And uh, then it asks if you want to go through auto secure configuration. For the video, I'm going to say no. What I would recommend is that you do that on your test router at some point so you can see what it does. It really buttons it down pretty securely, which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to do it here. Uh, also, it's kind of time consuming, so we're going to say no to that. But I do suggest you try it at some point in a test environment. Now it shows you the configuration that you built, and you can choose to save it or not. We're going to go ahead and save it, so I'll just hit enter because that's the default in the square brackets of two. Save the configuration to NVRAM and exit building the configuration and saving it to NVRAM and it only takes a moment to do it so it'll be done with it in just a second and we can see what we've got. Now it's done and you can see it's giving us a whole lot of console messages. Looks like it's hung but it's not actually. All we have to do is hit the enter key and now we're back at a prompt. So let's go into privilege mode again. So we'll type EN short for enable P at SS5678. That's the password that we just configured on it. Let's go ahead and look at the interfaces. So we'll do show IP interface brief. I'm abbreviating that with INT instead of typing out the word interface. There you can see uh, our gig 0 slash 0 is configured with an IP address and it's up. Gig 0 slash 1, however, is unassigned and it is administratively down. Now, when an interface is administratively down, that means that the shutdown command has been used on it to turn it off. So let's go in and configure Gig 0 slash 1 before we finish things up here. So we'll type config T, which is short for configure terminal or conf T. Now let's go into interface configuration mode from global configuration mode. So INT for interface gig 0 slash 1. We could type out the whole thing gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1, but why on earth would you do that? And now let's put an IP address on it using DHCP. So we'll type IP ADD for address DHCP. And let's bring the interface up because remember when we looked at it above it said administratively down so we have to use the command no shutdown. We can abbreviate that with no shut to bring it up and in a moment you'll see it will actually first change its state to down like it just did then it'll bring it back up and in just a moment you should see it pick up the IP address from my uh, office DHCP server. I'll give it just a second and there it is. Same one that we had before interestingly enough 192.168.1.239 with a 24-bit mask. So now we're done. Let's um, do control Z and Go back to privilege mode. Let's type the command show IP interface brief. And there you can see it's got the address from the DHCP server. So we have a, a fundamental configuration. This is a base configuration on the router. Let's save it with the command WR, which means write to memory. You could also do copy running config, startup config, or copy run start, which is what a lot of people do. But the, uh, the write family of commands are still supported, and that's a little less typing, and I'm all about less typing if I can.
So, like I say, now we have a base configuration on the router. If you'd like more information, you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. We've got more books at our bookstore. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. We'll talk about more videos in a moment. You can also follow us on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Like I said, if you'd like more videos, you can visit our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. We try to add one a week at least, sometimes more, sometimes less, but, but that's always the goal. And if you'd like to get the companion book, it is the Accidental Administrator Cisco Router Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide, and it's available from our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful. For Soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.